This video is brought to you by Sultan Al Sharif. Thank you so much for donating. If you want to support Brackies yourself, you can go to patreon.com slash Brackies. Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on creating a tower defense game in Unity. Today we are going to be creating a upgrade system that will allow users to upgrade their turrets for X amount of money while the game is running. So that's going to be super awesome and let's just dig right into it. So as you can see in the last video, we created this node UI, which is basically just a canvas with two buttons that will hover over any selected turret. The first one is the upgrade button, which we will make actually do something today. And then in the next video, we can do something with the sell button. So um, yeah, before we get started with this, I just want to fix a very quick uh, little bug that I uh, discovered when turning off the recording uh, from the last video. And that is, if we currently hit play and place some turrets at the very top of our map here. So let's just place some right here. You can see if we try and place these at the very top of some of these nodes, it's not going to give a hover animation and nothing happens when we press it. When we press it. And also if we try to select one of these, you can see that sometimes doesn't work. It does if we click down here, but not at the top. So what is happening here? Well, it's actually our top canvas that is currently overlaying our map a bit. And because that has a graphic ray caster, that will sometimes block uh, any information about uh, having clicked on an object. So what we want to do is simply disable this graphic ray caster. I believe you can just remove the component as well. I'm just going to keep it there. And that should actually fix that bug. So now if we go in here, we should see that um, uh, everything, if we select the turret, everything highlights properly and that we can uh, correctly shift between the different turrets. Much better. Awesome. So what I want to begin with here is our node script that sits on every node object in the game. Oops, that's our enemy script, our node script here. And you can see quite a lot is going on in here. And I actually want to add more stuff to this um, because I think the current way that we are building turrets can be make it made a lot more logical. So if we have a look here, we have a function called on mouse down. So whenever we press the, uh, the node, we check, are we over any GUI? If we are, we don't want to do anything. Do we really want to select this node? In, uh, in that case, then we want to do that. Uh, can we build there? If we can't, then we skip out. And if we pass through all of these if statements, well, then we're ready to build the turret. And we do that by calling build turret on and then passing in the node. And that uh, function sits on the build manager. I think it would be a lot more sensical to have this function sit on the node itself because we are building on the node. So we might as well have the function on the node. Also, we are passing in an instance of, uh, of or a reference to this instance of the class. And then we are changing stuff inside of our build manager. If we go into our build manager here, you can see that we are accessing turret under the node and changing that. And there's no reason to do that using a reference when we can just do all of it locally. So let's change this. So let's go in here and create a separate function. And we're just going to call this one build turret. And instead of uh, taking in a node, we are going to take in a blueprint. So we're going to take in here a turret blueprint containing the information about the turret that we want to build. And let's just call this one blueprint. Whoops. Let me not mess up the parentheses there. Awesome. So this is what we want to call down here. So we want to go build turret and then we want to pass in some kind of blueprint. And we will talk about where we get this from in a moment. Then inside of our build manager, we can take all of this code, copy it and delete it and delete the entire function, save that and go into our node and paste that here. So now we can use our blueprint instead of the turret to build. So in here we go blueprint.cost, um, we go blueprint.cast there, there as well. We go instantiate blueprint.prefab and we want to use get build position, but we don't need to reference it through a node now. So you can see we are removing a lot of unnecessary references here. So again, we don't want to go node.turret. And uh, currently these are both called turret, our turret up here and the temporary turret right here. So let's just go ahead and rename this to underscore turret and do that there as well. So we can distinguish between the turret we just instantiated and our local field variable up there. Then we have the effect here and we want to uh, instantiate 
a build effect and we could either have this sit on the blueprint as well. That would make sense because then you would be able to have different effects for different turrets when building them. But since we don't want to create that, let's just have this still sit on the game um, or on, on the build manager. So in that case, we could simply go build manager dot build effect. And because this is a public variable, that's totally accessible. And again, we our get build position here is just a local uh, function, so we don't need a reference. And everything else looks fine. I also want to remove this money left thing because we now have a money dis uh, counter. So we can just display turret build. Cool. So this function should actually work just fine now. However, we still need to pass in the correct blueprint. And this, of course, sits on the build manager. Our build manager is responsible for figuring out what to build next. So he has a variable called turret to build. And instead of making this public, which means that we could then also change it from outside of the script, let's just have a function called um, get turret to build. So we simply go down here, just like we have a select turret to build. And again, this is why we don't want to make it public, uh, publicly accessible. That means that we would be able to change it without also deselecting nodes. And we don't want to do that. We want to always deselect our nodes when we change the turret to build. So let's just make another public void here. And actually, it's not going to be a public void. It's going to be a public turret blueprint called get turret to build. And this is simply going to return the turret to build. There we go. It's that easy. So inside of our node now, we go build turret and then we go build manager dot get turret to build. Cool. So now things should be working and we can definitely try this out. So let's just hit play and let's try building some turrets. And you can see that works just fine. So now that we have our uh, code grouped a little more logically, we can also go ahead and add other functionality as well. So we have our build turret. Let's also make a public. And this time I want it to be public because we want this to be called from without the class. And this is going to be a public void called upgrade. Actually, let's do upgrade turret, just to be very specific on what's going on. And in here, we are essentially want to do a lot of the same stuff. So let's just take off this code and then edit it a tiny bit. So if player stats dot money is less than blueprint dot, and then we want to have an upgrade cost. And uh, if it's not, well, then we want to say not enough money to upgrade that and then return. We also want to subtract our upgrade cost. And we're going to be making this variable in a second. And the thing that we want to build is no longer blueprint.prefab. We want to instead build blueprint.upgraded um, prefab. And the same build position and everything. We can also have a separate effect. Right now we're just using build manager.build effect. We could also have a build manager.upgrade effect if you want that to look different. But I think the build effect looks really cool and I think it would work fine for upgrades so far. But you can definitely go in and change this. And then we want to say debug.log turret upgraded. However, remember, we currently have a turret there already, so we can't just instantiate the upgraded turret, then we're going to have two turrets sitting there. We also need to get rid of the previous version. So in order to do that, we use the fact that we have a reference to that turret right up here. And what I also want to do is I want to go in here and uh, instead of having this as an optional, uh, optional variable, I actually want to make this non-editable. I want to hide this in the inspector. And remember, you can use this whenever you need a public variable that you can access from anywhere, but that you don't want people to edit inside of the inspector. And this is one of those. And we're going to have multiple. We're also going to have a public uh, turret blueprint, which is going to be our current turret blueprint. And we're also going to have a uh, third one, which is going to be a public boolean. Oops, public boolean. Um, saying whether or not the turret is upgraded. So we're going to default that to false, and then we're going to switch it down here. So let's first of all set is upgraded to true. Whoops, this is inside of the build turret. We want to do that down here. We want to set is upgraded to true whenever we are done upgrading. And okay, so all of that is great. And then 
Let's see here. We also want to get rid of the old turret. And currently blueprint here um, is actually called turret blueprint. So let's just go ahead and change that. So this is going to be turret blueprint. There we go, there we go, and there we go. And uh, here before instantiating the new turret, let's get rid of the old run. So we just go destroy turret. And it's already a game object. So we can simply go like that. So get rid of the old turret. And here we are building a new one. Awesome. So all we really need to do now is have some way of calling this function because it should totally work. However, we don't call it from anywhere. And one thing we of course will run into is the fact that we haven't up, uh, added the upgrade cost added the upgrade cost and the upgraded prefab um, variables to our turret blueprint. So let's do that first. So let's go and find our turret blueprint script and let's just add two new variables, just the exact same way that we have our two previous one. We are going to have a public game object, which is going to be the upgraded, upgraded prefab. And we are going to have a public int with the uh, upgrade cost. There we go. And you could essentially make a system for upgrading turrets infinitely by simply uh, adding on to their um, variables. So you could just increase their damage by a fixed amount and the range by a fixed amount. But I think that we are going to limit ourselves to have uh, every turret have like two versions, a non-upgraded and an upgraded. You could also create an array or a list of turrets uh, that you cycle through. So your first step, you have the second step, third step, and um, every uh, and you can adjust the uh, cost and uh, edit every game object for each step. And uh, that would of course mean a fixed amount of upgrades, but it would meaning uh, mean that you have more than one. I think we are going to stick to the simple approach because, well, We've done that all the way through and I think it's worked out just fine. But that is something that you should definitely experiment on your own. I believe with the tools that you've gotten from the series so far that you should be able to do that. So um, of course, if you run into problems doing something like that, you can always visit the um, Brekkies forum at forum.brekkies.com uh, where people really want to help you with that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, so now we can save this and uh, we should get rid of those errors in here and we have so that's awesome so again we just need to call this upgrade turret function and when do we want to do that well we want to do that whenever we press the upgrade button so in case we've instantiated a turret we've selected it and we press the upgrade button that is when we want this stuff to happen so let's uh, create some functionality for this so let's find our node ui and let's um uh, double click that to open it up in Mono Develop in Visual Studio. I'm sorry. And in here, whenever we set the target, we don't want to do anything. We want to create a public void here called upgrade. And we want to hook this up to a button so that whenever we press a button, it will call this function right here. And this is simply going to go target dot upgrade target. Boom. That's all we need to do. What we can also do in here is hide the menu right after we do that. So we simply go build manager dot instance dot um, deselect node so that whenever we upgrade something, the menu doesn't stay open. It's just going to uh, close it and we're good to go. You could also just call the hide function directly, but that will actually mess uh, things up a bit um, because the node will still be selected, but the UI will just be hidden. So this is the way uh, you want to do it. Uh, yeah, cool. I believe that's all we need to do. So now we just need to hook things up. Uh, our node UI is fine, but we need to go into our shop, which is under the overlay canvas shop here. And we need to find the place where we are uh, setting up these different turret blueprints. And of course we need to add an upgraded prefab and an upgrade cost. So um, the upgrade cost here, I'm just going to set to something like 60. And of course you should definitely try this out, turn, balance it, do some math on it. What makes sense here? Um, uh, compared to just buying new turrets and stuff like that. But I'm just 
pulling this uh, number out of, uh, of out of the air and then we can see um, what happens with it. And then we have an upgraded prefab and we need to go in and create this. So let's find our um, standard turret prefab. Let's duplicate this and let's call this standard turret underscore upgraded. And uh, we can just drag this into the inspector so we can have a look at it. So I want to bump up the range to 20. I want to change the fire rate to something like 1.5. And I definitely also want to edit the bullet prefab. So let's create a separate prefab here uh, for the bullet here. So this is going to be, be the bullet upgraded. And we can go in here and drag our bullet in there and uh, hit apply on that. We can find our bullet upgraded and I want to just bump up the damage on this a bit to something like 70 and bump up the speed to something like 80. Cool. And um, what we can then, actually I don't want to bump up the speed. I think that's fine at 70. Um, cool. And then we can create some separate materials to make this actually pop. So let's uh, drag in our bullet here so we can see what's going on with it. And where is it? It's, it's down there. So let's just pull it over here so we can see what's going on. Awesome. So let's go under our materials and let's find our bullet material. Again, we want to duplicate this control D or command D and do bullet underscore upgraded. Drag that onto the bullet and then let's make this red to really make it pop. That's awesome. And we can delete that. Then we can uh, edit the materials for our standard turret upgraded as well. You can bring in a new model here. No one's saying that you uh, shouldn't do that. You can also just have it look the exact same, but I think you should make something different about it. You can just display the upgrade level using some kind of UI, but we're just gonna be modifying the material and making it a bit bigger. So the scale here, I want to do 1.2.2.2. Hit apply on that. And I also want to edit the material. So let's go and find our imports, find the standard turret, go on new materials. And you can see I've already created a folder here called materials underscore upgraded. And I just want to take all of these, duplicate them and drag them in there. Awesome. So this is going to be the uh, turret underscore upgraded underscore barrels. This is going to be the turret uh, underscore upgraded underscore main and finally we are going to have the turret underscore um, upgraded underscore secondary cool and then we can edit these so uh, of course we need to drag them in so let's select our standard turret upgraded here uh, let's find our uh, base uh, no a pot to rotate find our head here and let's drag this in so we're going to have our upgraded barrels our upgraded main and I'll upgrade it secondary and hit apply. And you can actually go in and edit the base as well, but I think I want the base to stay the same. And all I really want to do here is find our secondary color and make this red. So just to know, uh, just to show the user that there isn't a variation on this turret. I think this combined uh, with the scale of the turret is going to make it very clear which turrets are upgraded and which turrets are not, while still keeping the overall look and feel of the turrets so you can see that this is just another version of that turret. Cool, so uh, now we can select our shop and we can drag our upgraded prefab in there. So let's find our standard turret underscore upgraded and drag it in there and we should be able to hit play. The missile launcher and the laser beamer will do in the next video. I think um, this one is already fairly long and uh, we're not completely done yet. So in the next video, we'll uh, definitely hook those up. So uh, let's try and hit play and uh, let's spawn in some turrets here. And you can see currently that our upgrade cost doesn't update, uh, but it should be the appropriate cost here. You can see we're currently on this much money. I'm going to hit, uh, I hit upgrade. Oh, of course we need to hook up our buttons as well. So uh, we need to go and find our node UI, find our buttons and then the upgrade button. And uh, we are just going to add an on click event onto this. So let's hit uh, plus there and let's um, drag in our node UI and go on the node UI and then upgrade in order to actually call that method that we created uh, whenever we, uh, we upgrade stuff. So let's try that again. So now we're going to go in here, create some turrets, and I'm going to hit upgrade. 
And we have an all reference exception, so that's awesome. Let's find out what's going on. All right, so I figured out what the mistake was, and uh, that's just me being stupid. So of course, inside of our node, whenever we are building the turret, we also need to make sure that we are setting the turret blueprint equal to the um, blueprint that was passed in. There we go. So we are passing in the blueprint of the turret that we want to build, and we need to also make sure to save that on the node. Now it's done, we made the variable accessible, but we didn't actually change it in any way. And that was why we were getting that null reference exception. So let's try this one more time. So let's uh, build three turrets, let's try upgrading and boom, there we go. Awesome, so that's working and it's looking super, super cool. Cool, and you can see the second time here, I can actually keep upgrading these. And that's a problem and also our UI is currently not updating uh, to show um, the actual cost of that. So that's what we're going to be editing now and that's the last thing we're going to be doing in this video. So let's very quickly have a look at how we can change this. So if we go under our node UI, let's begin by looking at how we can make the um, upgrade cost actually update. So let's enable our canvas and let's also uh, remove the rotation here while we edit it. And let's go into 2D mode. So you can see under our upgrade button, we have a text variable, and this is containing both the upgrade uh, title and the uh, cost. Let's split this up into two different variables. So let's uh, have this one be our text and duplicate that. And this, is what, this one is going to be the actual uh, cost or amount. And uh, let's rename that to cost. And then we can simply take the text here, drag that up, to something like 30.25 is going to be fine and drag our cost down. So we split it in half and then we take our cost here and anchor our text to the top and we take our text and anchor that to the bottom. There we go, so we have the exact same thing uh, but now it's split up into two different objects and that just makes it easier to handle uh, inside of um, Visual Studio. So uh, what we can then do is take our text here, change that to upgrade without the um, bold tags. And we can simply go in here and now change this to Roboto bold from the very beginning. And uh, everything else looks good. Of course, we want to update this on the cell button as well. So what we'll do is simply go in here, remove the cell button, duplicate the upgrade button. And we simply go in here and change the text to cell, change the cost to, I don't know, let's just do 50 here and let's change the uh, button name to cell cool and of course we want to remove the on click event there we go so what we then do is go under our node ui double click that and we create a reference to our text object containing the cost so we go under uh, up here and include unity engine dot ui so we can make a reference to a text object. So we're going to make a public text here, which is going to be the upgrade upgrade cost. And then when we set a new target, meaning that, well, we've selected a turret, we're going to move it and we're going to set the UI to active. And we're also going to go upgrade cost dot text is now equal to target dot turret blueprint dot cost. And of course we want to add onto this the dollar sign. There we go. That's all we need to do there. And um, yeah, so that should actually update. So if we just make sure to drag in the UI element, so we drag in our, um, and we need to find that. So let's select our node UI. Let's drag in, not the text, but the cost there. And we disable the canvas. We should see this working already. So if we go in here and create a turret, and this should say 60 now. And it doesn't, it says a hundred. So why does it do that? Let's find out. So let's go into our shop, overlay canvas shop, and let's see the upgrade cost is currently 60. And that's why. So we are using cost and not upgrade cost. Awesome. So now we should see this working and we can also go under the canvas and rotate this on 35 degrees again. Just rotate it back to where it was before. And now we should this, uh, see this update here. So there we go. And if we uh, were to spawn in a missile launcher, which currently has an, a default upgrade cost of zero, you can see that it says that as well. So it does update depending on the turret. Awesome. So uh, the 
final thing that I wanted to do was just make it so that we can't upgrade um, when multiple times. So we have upgraded one uh, time and otherwise it's just going to disable that button. And all we really need to do here is go in and use the fact that we now have a variable under our target called is upgraded. So in case we are already upgraded, then we want to disable this button. Uh, and we only want to uh, change the upgrade text here in case we're not. So we're going to go in here, create an uh, if statement saying if target dot is not upgraded, then we want to set the upgrade cost dot text and all of that. And if it is, so if it's already upgraded, then we want to do upgrade uh, cost dot text and set that equal to um, done or upgraded or uh, maxed out or whatever. And uh, what we also want to do is create a reference to the button itself so that we can make it non-interactable. So uh, let's have a button here and we'll just call this uh, upgrade button. And all we need to do is go down here and say button, no, upgrade button, upgrade button, there we go, dot interactable equals false uh, or true in this case and false in the other case. There we go. And that will just kind of fade the button out a little bit and make uh, remove any hover animations and also make sure that it doesn't call this function down here um, in case it's already upgraded. So now let's try actually doing that. So let's try and going in here and uh, dragging in our upgrade button and that should be it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's try it. Let's hit uh, maximize. And if my system doesn't freeze here, there we go. Wow, <laughs> nerves I haven't saved. There we go. Let's maximize, let's hit play, and let's try this out. So let's create three turrets. Let's select one of them. Let's hit upgrade. It upgrades, we can select it again. It says upgrade done. You can see it's a bit faded out and we can't click it. We can still click the cell, but we can't click the upgrade. And it changes for the other one. So you can see now that we have a really, really nice upgrade system in here. Um, and that makes it very clear on what's going on, how much, it, how much it's going to cost and allows you to change a bunch of different parameters from uh, graphics to um, effects to uh, damage range and all that kind of stuff on the different turrets. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to implementing the next turrets along with uh, some selling of stuff in the next one. So I guess there's only one thing left to say, which is upgrade complete, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October, and a special thanks to Sultan El Shadif, Faisal Marify, and James Kelhoun. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash